Good morning. Thank you. The sermon theme for today is, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? Mark is a lawyer today, but that's not where his story began. Mark grew up on the south side of Chicago, and he had no sense of life beyond high school. He was living for the moment. In the 11th grade, a special guest came to their assembly, and that special guest mentioned college and how accessible it was for someone like him. He had never really thought about college. Mostly everyone in his family worked, and a few didn't. The bar of expectation for him was simply to complete high school and go get a job. With this new exposure, Mark decided he would, he thought the idea of going to college sounded good. He started researching colleges. The one thing he did not have was money, and he realized that college cost a lot of money. But the one thing he did have that he brought to the table was time. He had lots and lots of time. And so Mark decided to apply for every scholarship he could find. This puts us in the text of creation today. There are lots of stimulating conversations around Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. But today, I would like to explore the implications that we are caretakers of God's creation. We have the power to make a positive change in our world. And what God brought to the table was God's creativity, God's compassion, and responsibility. And what we bring to the table is our creativity, our compassion, and our responsibility. If you have ever traveled down a street across the straight lines out of the country, God's creativity must astound you. The beauty of every season is there waiting for us to see. The earth springs alive in April. The summer gives us all she's got. Fall brings an array of colors to the leaves. Winter in its hibernation state is adorned with snow. The rivers, the ocean, the falls, the streams, the currents, the creek, the sounds of nature moving at its own pace. The trees, the deserts, the sun rising, the sun setting, the hills, the mountains, the valleys, they sit in confidence. God's creativity astounds us. Roger is a barber. He is good at what he does. When he cuts a man's hair, the man leaves feeling 10 feet tall. Roger's able to cut all kinds of designs into men's hair. Roger is known for his creativity and his art. Roger decided to donate some of his time to cutting homeless men's hair. They come in with hair that has been neglected for far too long. He sits them in his chair and puts a cutting cape around them, and then he begins to cut. He begins to chisel. If ever there was an amazing before and after picture, it is here. He cuts away hair and gives them a style that puts the biggest smile on their faces. Well, Roger could just cut hair and get paid. But Roger has chosen to use his creativity to bless somebody else. God doesn't just give us creativity, but God gives us compassion. Compassion allows us to be touched by another human being. We have much capacity for empathy and care of others, including the environment. Nashville, Tennessee Representative Justice Joan is an advocate for gun violence control, among other justice issues, in a house that is predominantly Republican and conservative. When kids and people were killed in Nashville, he knew he had to take a stand. There was something in him that was touched by what was happening around him. He had to walk with the people. He knew that the moment was now. He brings to the table a sense 
that we have to challenge policies that endanger the lives of people. He says, I represent 76,000 people. The grief and trauma of this community, I've been seeing them and I've been feeling that. And when they asked me, will you do something? Will you act? That was personal. This is a community that I'm a part of and accountable to. I want to make sure I'm representing with the most passion and authenticity the reason I was sent here in the first place. We are a compassionate people. I see it in many of you. It matters to us. It matters to United Church of Hyde Park how others are treated. And last and most visible in this text, God gives us responsibility. God has entrusted to us the care of creation, the fish, the animals, the environment. In Abbott Elementary, they give the fifth graders the baby egg project. They can draw on the egg, the fifth graders, they can humanize the egg. They can write their initials on the egg so that everyone knows that this is their egg. They are asked to bring something in to transport the egg around. They are giving a caring for my egg log sheet. And for the next 48 hours, they are entrusted to care for this egg. At the end of the experiment, the students meet in small groups and then a large group to discuss the whole project. They are invited to share their challenges, their frustration, the injuries to the egg, and the responsibility that accompany this project. The goal of this project is to teach kindness and responsibility. Caring for each other is a big responsibility. Looking out for one another, noticing, helping, praying, and all of the above can absolutely be hard work. Humans, just like eggs, are fragile, sometimes more than we realize. Much care must be given to how we care for one another. In addition to our own loan, to our own load, the heaviness of our own responsibilities, to be as considerate about another can be a juggling act as we weigh our needs and the needs of others. Sometimes even change is required of us to make room for and care for others. Part of caring is, is to take only what we need so that future generations might have what they need. So what do you bring to the table? What has God put in you to be a blessing to others? That's something for you to think about. Maybe over time, God may make it clearer. There's so many ways you can serve in this community of faith. I would love to talk to anyone who is interested in serving and bringing more to the table. The text today suggests, however, that all of us, all of us bring something to the table, that every one of us can do something. All of us have creativity and compassion, and we are challenged to share the responsibility of our earth. These are not easy tasks, but they are necessary. Speaking of tables, we have fellowship after church, and it's kind of now considered like a potluck. We get to go over to the room north of us and sit and talk. We spend time talking and extending our much needed time together next door. We have beverages and coffee and tea. We also have light snacks. We need more people to participate. Subtle, isn't it? And bringing snacks to the table. If you don't have it, that's one thing. But if you're in the grocery store, you're out shopping and you see something on, sta on sale, the spirit of Pentecost might remind you that you too can bring something to the table. We all have something to bring, and I want all of us to feel empowered about that what God has put in us matters. We all bring something to the table, even if we're discerning 
well, what do I bring to the table? Today, I began talking about a high school student who had never really considered college until a special guest came along. Sometimes we don't think about things, and then somebody might say something, and we realize, and our world is exposed. Our eyes are open. This, college, this high school student now had a new possibility that he had never considered before, that maybe I could go to college. But what he didn't bring was money. Sometimes people feel like when they don't have money, they don't have anything. But what he had was time. There are so many things that God gives to us that might not be money, but there are other resources. Mark, in the end, said he had nothing to lose, and he applied for over 100 scholarships. That's a lot of scholarships. He got so used to applying, he had stacks that he would just know how to send out. He had kind of like a paragraph, and he would work it, depending on the scholarship company. And while Mark got lots of no's, it turns out 12, 12 institutions gave him scholarships, and that was enough to not only cover his college, but he got a check back because it more than covered his amount. Mark could have easily been deterred by the obstacle of what he didn't have, but he quickly discovered what he did have. It is easy sometimes for us to see all the things we don't have. I don't have this. I don't, if I just... And sometimes we miss what we do have, what is resting in our closet and on our heart. Mark brought to the table time, but all of us, every one of us, whether you're listening through media or you're here in person, you're walking with a walker or you're learning how to walk, each of us, whether sometimes you can hear me or sometimes you can't, whether your vision is not what it used to be. All of us, all of us, all of God's creation has something to bring to the table. Amen.